The Tyrannosaurus Rex, often called the Tyrant Lizard King, reigned as one of the largest and most formidable terrestrial predators to have ever walked our planet. On the other side, we have the Vastatosaurus Rex, the Ravager Lizard King from Skull Island, a fictional yet terrifying descendant of the original T-Rex that evolved under harsh, competitive conditions. These apex predators are worthy opponents, but how do they stack up against each other? Well, there's only one way to find that out. But of course, before we do, if you enjoy videos just like this, don't forget to like and subscribe and let us get onto the fight. The Tyrannosaurus Rex holds the title of one of the most massive land predators in history. Now, its size does range quite a bit depending on the specimens that you use. However, as with most fictional battles, I will be using the larger estimates. This would place it at approximately 13 meters or 43 feet in length and 4 meters or 13 feet tall at the hips. Now, we all know that T-Rex was robust, but you truly can't stop the Rex train. The Vividum recently covered the T-Rex known as Goliath, estimating that he reached around 12.5 tons at a max maximum weight. Because this news is very new, I think it's best to stick with Cope's larger estimates of around 11.7 tons, but it's still impressive that T-Rexes seem to manage to pack more and more weight over the years. With this added bulk, it allowed T-Rex to dish out and absorb tremendous amounts of damage in combat. Y-Rex is a famous example as its injury consisted of a missing portion of its tail and surviving. Although there are conflicting studies, it is generally agreed upon that another Tyrannosaur would have been the culprit and signs of healing suggest that it did indeed survive of this initial confrontation. Then we have the peak testament to the T-Rex's resilience, this being Stan, a well-known Tyrannosaurus Rex specimen that bore clear signs of having endured several injuries, the most notable of which consisted of broken ribs, a set of fused neck vertebrae, and a bite to the brain case, all of which he survived. If that doesn't scream a unit and a half, I just don't know what does. In comparison, the V-Rex, though fictional, is portrayed as a dominant predator even amongst the creatures of Skull Island. This carnivore could measure around 15.2 24 meters or 50 feet long, surpassing T-Rex in length. It also significantly surpassed the T-Rex in height as it reached approximately 6 meters or 20 feet at the head. However, despite its greater length and height, the V-Rex was actually quite a bit lighter. Its weight is estimated to be around 8 to 10 tons. This is mainly due to the fact that in the 2000s, we believe T-Rex was a fair bit lighter than it is today. So they just added a few tons to it and there you go, it was larger. However, clearly its weight doesn't hold up too well when compared to modern estimations for the real world T-Rex. Its body also undertook some significant changes, with its legs, feet, and hip size increasing, while its chest and rib size decreased, seemingly a sacrifice for added mobility. What you can't take away from this theropod is that it was a living beast when it came to eating up damage. We saw during their battle against King Kong, the V-Rex has sustained severe trauma, including broken jaws, being choked, and overall just getting thrown around and pummeled. Yet they continued to fight tenaciously. Arguably, their best showing from that fight is the ability to be thrown around and yet be able to get back up without sustaining any visible injuries. And it's important to note that the V-Rexes that we're using for this battle are based off the ones from the 2005 movie. This is pretty much at the end of Skull Island being a thing where V-Rexes are highly inbred. But how about speed? Although Tyrannosaurus Rex was gigantic, it was still able to reach some pretty solid speeds. A recent study by Adrian B and Scott S suggested that T-Rexes like Sue could reach a maximum speed of 31 kilometers an hour or 19 miles per hour. However, since the T-Rex we are using for this video is quite a bit heavier than Sue, it would more likely sit around the 20 to 25 kilometers an hour or 12 to 15 miles per hour speed. While not exceptionally fast in the grand scheme of things, it certainly was not one to underestimate. Additionally, Tyrannosaurus Rex was quite an agile dinosaur, with its ability to pivot being remarkable for its size. It evolved to be more agile than similarly sized theropods such as Giganotosaurus. On the other hand, the V-Rex's distinct body structure allowed them to be faster and more agile than the T-Rex. In quick bursts of speed when hunting or engaging in combat, it could reach around 40 kilometers an hour or 25 miles per hour. However, with this impressive speed for its size, it came at the cost of its stamina, as they were only able to maintain such speeds for a short period of time. We also witnessed from their fight with Kong that they are highly agile, being able to easily bend and whip around at a moment's notice. But now we get onto weaponry. The T-Rex's weaponry is unmatched in the dinosaur fossil record. Its skull being over 1.5 meters or 5 feet long, housed a bite force estimated at 35,000 newtons at a low end, with many current studies supporting a bite well over 50,000 newtons, this being enough to not only crush bone, but straight up demolish it with ease. Their thick teeth covered with light serrations could exceed 15 centimeters in length, allowing them to easily slice through flesh and puncture bone. Adding on to this, the T-Rex's reinforced skull structure and strong neck muscles allowed it to possibly deliver devastating blows to prey or rivals with solid head shoves. 
The Virix is similarly armed with a powerful bite, but their skull is much more like a bulldog's, being boxier and more sturdy. Now, this does not automatically translate to a more effective or powerful bite. As for one, to my knowledge, we don't have an official bite force for the V-Rex, and for two, their teeth are very jagged, lacking the serrations and are not as large or as sharp as the T-Rexes. Don't get me wrong, their bite would likely do substantial damage, but I think they lack the jaw muscles required to be at the same level as the original T-Rex. The V-Rex also possesses an extra digit on its limbs that as with the T-Rex, would likely not be all that useful for fighting. On the plus side, its skull was far better evolved for being used as a weapon like a sludge hammer, being able to slam into and stumble prey and opposition alike. It was significantly more reinforced than that of the real T-Rex, added with its reptilian scales, makes it a very dangerous weapon if utilized as such. Now, when it comes to intelligence and senses, the Tyrannosaurus Rex was likely among the smartest of the large theropods, with a relatively large brain to body ratio. Its advanced sensory capabilities, including exceptional eyesight, acute hearing, and a highly developed sense of smell made it a proficient hunter. Studies on the olfactory bulbs of the T-Rex suggest it could detect scents over vast distances, allowing it to track other dinosaurs across its territory. The V-Rex, while fictional, is portrayed as a relentless hunter, but I wouldn't say it was shown to be smart or have any solid senses. I mean, we legitimately see one of them ditch a large lizard to go ahead and chase a human. And then when they were fighting Kong, they were more so focusing on eating the human instead of, you know, focusing on the fight. Either way, intelligence and senses don't really play a massive role in terms of fighting. However, the V-Rex's aggression when starting fights might put it in a bad position. When it comes to experience, T-Rex had a significant edge, having involved in an open environment rather than being confined to an island. It's well known that T-Rex regularly contended with some of the most heavily armed herbivores in history. Among them was Ankylosaurus, a five-ton giant wielding a club tail capable of delivering bone-breaking blows at approximately 25,000 newtons, enough to seriously injure a T-Rex if it was and careful. Then there was a Montosaurus, a hadrosaur that not only matched T-Rex in weight, but in some cases could even surpass its higher estimates by three tons. Although hadrosaurs in general are often underestimated in terms of defense, their sheer mass made them formidable opponents. Then T-Rex also hunted the iconic Triceratops, a powerhouse of a herbivore that would surpass 10 tons in weight, as well as being armed with horns that were more than capable of inflicting fatal wounds. There is plenty of evidence of these two duking it out on numerous occasions, so clearly T-Rex wasn't backing down. Beyond just hunting, T-Rex was no stranger to intraspecific combat. Fossil evidence reveals numerous specimens with healed wounds, suggesting frequent clashes with their own kind. A 2021 study led by Caleb Brown confirmed that intraspecific combat was a common occurrence throughout the Tyrannosaurid family. Of course, arguably the most famous example of this, which we already went through, was Stan. Although there are a number of other fossils which display the conflict between Tyrannosaurs. Now on paper, many would say that V-Rex evolved for an environment that was even more unforgiving. Although I can get behind that for the juveniles, I'm not too sure if I would say that for the adults. This is because of how they operated. Although they did look mean, and without a doubt they were the apex predators of their domain, it turns out they were not as confident as one would think. Like T-Rex, V-Rex could have hunted heavily armored herbivores, one of its most dangerous prey items being Feructus, a close relative of Triceratops. The Feructus's overall body plan does not look nearly as tough or as sturdy as the classic Triceratops. Even then, V-Rex is mainly targeted the smaller females, with dominant males being on par with an adult V-Rex. Hadrosaur-like creatures also existed on Skull Island, including Lygocrystus. They are described as very timid and prefer to run for safety, and for this reason, they were the main prey item for the V-Rex. Although much larger dinosaurs like Brontosaurus did inhabit the island, V-Rexes only targeted the younger individuals and never adults. Now beyond prey, V-Rex had to also contend with other apex predators, including rival members of its own species. V-Rex frequently engaged in intraspecific combat combat with many members having healed wounds and deep scarring as a result of territory knockdown brawls. There was also Venatosaurus, a raptor-like theropod that could take on and defeat groups of juveniles, but they wouldn't mess with the adults. And then beyond even the rival theropods, Virix has also faced conflicts with Skull Island's dominant primate, Primatus Kong. These apes could weigh anywhere from 9 to 14 tons, and unlike the other opponents, the Kongs possessed intelligence, tool using capabilities, and enough strength to really give a run for their money. These clashes were often over territory and both would take out each other's offspring if they had the chance in order to gain more control over the island. So both are clearly impressive theropods, but what categories do each take? Well, I think Tyrannosaurus Rex takes weight, bite force, bite effectiveness, weaponry, stamina, intelligence, senses, battle intelligence, and experience. Whereas I think the Vistatosaurus Rex takes length, height, speed, agility, 
flexibility, endurance, pain tolerance, and armor. And durability would be around equal for the both of them. Now it's time to get onto the battle. And when these two apex predators clash, it's a battle of raw power, experience, and endurance. While Virix holds the advantages in height, speed, and ruthless attacks, T-Rex brings sheer bulk, a more powerful bite, and a lifetime of battle experience against some of the most dangerous herbivores and rival tyrannosaurs. The fight would likely begin with V-Rex using its speed and agility to circle and test the T-Rex, attempting to land quick bites and headbutts. Its greater height would allow it to be out of reach for a majority of the time. The T-Rex, with its superior bite force of over 50,000 newtons, would only need one good bite to shift the tide to its favor, but it would be about getting that first bite before being overwhelmed. T-Rex would likely be able to use its greater mass to sustain the headbutts. Being that it was lower to the ground, it would put the V-Rex in a more awkward position. But even then, the T-Rex would likely stumble from repeated rams, hopefully not getting knocked down. While the V-Rex is strong, it is still down a couple tons in weight. T-Rex could use this advantage to position itself for a moment to deliver one devastating bite to the V-Rex's thick neck or skull. If the V-Rex managed to stay in the fight, I believe it lacks the weaponry required to take down the T-Rex in a prolonged fight. We've seen T-Rex specimens like Stan and Y-Rex survive catastrophic injuries including bites to the skull and shattered bones. Meanwhile, V-Rex was shown to take attacks from Kong and its ability to sustain its weight hitting the ground is impressive, but they were shown to be clumsy with their bites, not being able to take down Kong even when three of them were attacking. Also, we did see that Kong, with an injured jaw, was able to pierce their hide with a bite, and that bite would be infinitely weaker than that of the T-Rexes. Ultimately, while the Varex would get some solid hits in with its superior mobility, I believe that the T-Rex's bulk and bite force would come in as an important factor for its victory. If the T-Rex landed a direct bite on the neck, it's over. If it landed on the V-Rex's leg, then it would lack significant mobility. Meanwhile, I think that the T-Rex could sustain more bites from the V-Rex than the V-Rex could from the T-Rex. But I won't act like there's no scenario where the V-Rex could win. If the V-Rex utilized its superior speed and overall size to overwhelm the T-Rex, then I think it could very well win. But in this scenario, in my overall opinion, I think that the Tyrant Lizard King would emerge victorious, albeit at a high difficulty. And thus, we've reached the end of the video and I hope you've all enjoyed. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'll catch you all in the next video. See ya.